it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, so today I'm going to make some Christmas ornaments. The first thing we need to do is trace out our pictures on our rocks. So I'll just show you the rocks I've chosen. Uh, this is a piece of epidote that was in a recent video of uh, slabbing this stuff. And that same video I did this uh, unikite. And this one's got some white and some red and some green, so good Christmas colors there. Uh, this is quartz, either from Lake Huron or Lake Superior. Uh, I find more of this in Lake Superior, so it's probably from there. It's another piece of unikite with a lot more red in it. Uh, I believe that's unikite, although unikite doesn't always have, or doesn't usually have stripes like that. I just want to get this one wet and show you how cool it looks. Aren't those just the best Christmas colors? But usually unikite is more like, I had crosses drawn on here, but they're not going to be crosses, they're going to be Christmas ornaments. But usually unikite has streaks more like that rather than these parallel lines. Uh, but I just love that one. I wish I had more of it. I did have more of it originally. I don't know what I did with it, but I must have made something out of it. Uh, and then this is a piece of quartz I bought. I got here um, in on, near Lake Huron. Uh, well, it was in the woods, though. This wasn't in the lake. But a uh, nice, nice color of green there. Uh, it's a little bit translucent, too. So those are the ones I picked out as my Christmas colors. And then I just made little stencils uh, just by printing out pictures and cutting them out with an X-Acto knife, so I'll use those to trace. Uh, my wife liked this Christmas tree better, and I like the more rounded one better, uh, partially because I think this might tumble better. Uh, these pointy parts may not survive, especially up at the top there. So, anyhow, I've got some other pictures. I've got a, a bell, got an angel, and then this one, I'm gonna give it a shot, see if it works, but I was gonna try to do a stocking in two parts. I'll do the top part in the white and then the bottom part in another color and then glue them together after they tumble. So we'll see if that works. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't, but uh, we're going to go try and see what happens. Well, I've just drawn all my shapes on here and I realize there's a problem with my wife's Christmas tree design. Uh, one I didn't think of until I was drawing these out. Uh, eventually I'm going to have to drill a hole down into the top to make an eye to hang these from. And mine is going to be bad enough to get a hole in that little thing. But to drill down into the top of that is going to be impossible. Uh, so no Christmas trees like this just because there's, there's no way to make that work. So next thing is to cut these out in the saw. So let's go over to the saw. Okay, before we get started, I thought I'd show you the saw I'm using. Uh, this is a Gemlap saw. And this over here is a Fran Tom saw. Neither of these saws are made anymore. They're both very old. And uh, this saw is better for what I'm going to do right now. Uh, the reason it's better is because the arbor for this saw, the shaft that goes through the blade, is at the same level as a table, which puts half of this blade above the table and makes a 90 degree angle right here. Over on this saw, we've got the arbor below the level of the table, less than half the blade sticks up, and this is greater than a 90 degree angle. Uh, so this is angled back on this saw. This is farther away and that's closer to the cut. So here's why that's important. Here's a rock that I cut with the second saw I showed you. And this looks really nice right here. It looks like a nice cut. But if you flip it over, you can see that it's cut deeper on the bottom than it did on the top. Here's the top again. So everything looks good there. But since this saw extends farther into the rock at the bottom than it does to the top, the bottom gets all messed up. And that's what's so nice about this saw over here. So you might be wondering why don't I even have this other saw? Well, it's got a couple things. It has a vise here, so I can just flip this down and it runs along the shaft. I can clamp a rock in there um, and move a rock along to slice it up. Uh, it also has a little fence here. So I can loosen this up, move this over, and, and set a, a you know, quarter inch or whatever I want to cut my rock at and cut some slabs with it. So, oh, and also, this I can cut a much deeper rock. I can you know, move my rock all the way back until I hit here. This one, um, since the shaft is up at the table level, you're going to run into the shaft, and there's this whole big box built over it. So you can't cut very far back on this saw. So if you want to make what I'm making and you've got a saw like this and you think, well, I can't do it because I don't have the right kind of saw, all you need to do, this is what I did before I had the other saw, 
is you just build a little ramp and this ramp has to angle down towards the, the center here. So now at the ramp I've got that 90 degree angle. So I had this saw a long time before the other saw and this is how I did all my cutting. I just I put a little clamp back here to hold this on and then I just run my rocks right down there and I've got my 90 degree angle. So if you got this kind of saw you can still use it. it just takes a little extra effort. Okay, I've decided that it's going to be easier to drill my holes before I cut the whole shape out. So I just cut the bottom flat and the top flat, marked where I'm going to drill the hole, and I'm going to use my Dremel drill press to, to drill these holes. So there's a uh, Dremel tool in the drill press attachment. I'm using a one millimeter bit. Uh, these bits are uh, they're pretty cheap, they're like under a dollar I think. If you buy a bunch of them I think you can get it down to 75 cents. Uh, sometimes you don't get any holes before the drill bit wears out. Sometimes you get a dozen holes if you're really lucky. Um, the worst thing that can happen is the drill bit breaks off inside the hole. Uh, if that happens, there's no getting it out. You can't drill in that spot anymore, and so you're sort of out of luck. So I uh, hope that doesn't happen in too many of them. Uh, the other advantage of not cutting out first is I could just slide this this way and drill another hole right next to the other one. So worst comes to worst, that's what I'll do. Okay, I'm going to be cutting in water to keep the drill bit cool. So the first thing we need to do is kind of line everything up. And I'm moving my head over to the right. I know you can't see me right now, but I kind of look at it from both sides. So I'm trying to look through the water it just distorts everything. All right, I think that's where I want it. Just going to check the depth with an old drill bit. I think I got about that much, so that should be enough.
I'm all done cutting these out now. So we've still got these in separate pieces. And there was some material left over that wasn't big enough for Christmas ornaments, but I got a few crosses out of those. So the next step is these are going to go into my vibratory tumbler. So I have a lotto tumbler. You could use any vibratory tumbler, but it's important that you don't put these in a rotary tumbler at this point. Uh, rotary tumblers shape the rocks more, and these will come out looking different than they went in. Or if you put them in a vibratory tumbler, they're going to come out looking the same basic shape uh, with just the edges rounded off just a little bit. Um, and of course they're going to be shiny when they come out. So I'm not going to go into all the details about what has to happen with the tumbler. I've got another video for that. I'll link it in the description. Uh, but basically they're going to go for two days in 220 silicon carbide and then three days in 500 aluminum oxide and then two more days in aluminum oxide polish and that part will be done. These are all done tumbling now. They've just come out of the polish stage. And I just wanted to point out something to be careful of. Uh, since I drilled these holes before tumbling, grit can get stuck in that little hole there. And it could come out in the next stage and uh, mess up your tumble. So what I've been doing is using a sewing needle and I'm just cleaning them out each step along the way. Before I glue these stockings together, uh, they're very shiny in between here and the glue's just not going to stick on those. So I have my Dremel tool here and what I'm going to do is just rough those up a little bit. Now the glue has something to stick on. I need something to hang these by, so I'm using this scrap silver wire from making jewelry. I'm just going to make a little eye here. Something like that. And then I'll just clip that off. And I like to put a little twist in the end of this. So when I glue this in, I want it to have something to the glue to grab onto something. And if it's straight, it might just pull out. Probably have to make that a little shorter too. I don't have to worry about marring this up because the more I mar it up, the better the glue is going to grab onto that. There we go. Something like that. Like I said, I'll have to clip a little bit off the end yet because the holes aren't that deep. All right, to glue these up, I have some epoxy mixed up. Just going to get a little tiny bit of epoxy on there. And I test fit my eye first to make sure it was the right depth. And then I have the backs of these roughed up. And I just need to put a little bit of epoxy on there. Try to go easy on this so it's not oozing out all over because it's not fun to try to clean up. I think I'll set it on the table here. I have wax paper down on the countertop. There we go. Looks good. Whoops. Doesn't look good. Made a mistake. Got the hook on the wrong side. Glad I caught that. I'm going to take her back here, so 
That's the way we want it. That looks better. Focus. Cool. Well, they're all finished, and I couldn't be happier. I think these turned out really nice. My favorite is that tree right there, followed really closely by the stockings. I like the stockings a lot. All right, so I think it's time to go put some of these on the tree. Thank you. 